This episode is brought to you by Sutra Beauty. Hello, babe. Hey, <laughs> nice to How see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I miss you. Yeah, a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. yeah. And you look good. Thank you, you too. I like your hair. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is my morning hair when I just woke mm. up and I have no time to go and take care of it. So I'm like, I wish I had woke up like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What time is it in Israel right now? Now it's eight, eight in the evening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now it's 10 a.m. for me. So, you know. Wow. Big I'm, difference. Yeah. But I wanted to introduce you to... Uh, everyone who's listening. So Adar Gandelsman is basically where my whole s- story started as an activist, as Miss Iraq. She was Miss Israel, Miss Universe Israel in 2017. And you might've seen her pictures. You might have seen our interviews together. We posed for a picture at Miss Universe and it went viral and we had a lot of drama <laughs> started after that. Um, yeah. But, you know, basically every time I, every time I go and I speak anywhere or every time I talk to someone, they want to know what exactly happened. So do you want to tell them what exactly (laughs) happened? (laughs) I think until today, I don't know what exactly happened. Like even today, I don't know how things turn out like, like this, like how this happened to us, but it's crazy. Like. We just made a picture, we become friends, and this, <laughs> this no, is People got to hear more of the details, so I remember <laughs> the details a little bit, and correct me if I'm wrong. Remember, we were doing a photo shoot, right, for um, Perfect Face, and yeah. I was standing, like, you know, there was like a line of girls, and I was standing, and I was waiting for my turn. And I think you were like standing a bit far away from me, but you didn't have your sash on, right? Yeah, you I didn't. didn't. And you, you had it. You <laughs> yeah. had your sash. You rocked. You like tricked me, bitch. woman. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you didn't have your sash on. And I remember, you know, because like, listen, I got there and. I got a little bit of attention there because like, oh, Miss Iraq, you know, Iraq just came back into the pageant. People were losing their shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And basically, so yeah, every time I remember every time I go and I see a girl, like they always come to me. They want to talk to me. They're excited. You, you're the only one who did not come and speak to me. You're the only one. (laughs) And basically, because, tell us. (laughs) Yeah, because when I came to the the Miss Universe, before I came, like the Miss Israel organization told me, like, don't go close to any mm-hmm. Arab country. You don't have a problem with them, but they have a problem with you. It's better not to make yeah. the situation awkward. Mm-hmm. So I knew that every Arab country, I'm not going to get close. If you want, you can come to me. I don't have a problem with anyone, but I, I, I knew that I, I cannot come close to you. Like I knew that it's, uh, it's going to make problems for you, like not for me, but. Um, No, and I didn't, we didn't know. Well, I don't know if you know about it, but I didn't know about this until after the pageant that uh, Miss Lebanon, like one of the years she got into trouble for the same thing. She Yeah, I knew, I knew about that. Okay. Because of that, because this situation, I knew that I, I don't want to make any trouble. You understand? I don't want to make something that for you can cause a lot of, a lot of trouble, a lot of yeah. drama. I didn't want something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, when mm-hmm. after when we make the picture, I told you about that. Also, I told yeah. you like you're sure about that. You're yeah. sure you don't have a problem with this. And because of that, also I was really scared to to talk to you, like to to make this friendship but when we just started to talk it was like so natural for both of us no listen I when you told me well when you told me like are you sure about this I didn't know you you need to understand like literally I walked into Miss Universe like even when Miss Iraq called on me like my history in the pageant world I think I won because of my speeches not because I'm like a pageant girl and I do like the walk and the training like I never done any of that you know I yeah. told you about this. So 
No. So basically what you told me, you said, are you sure about this? I didn't know what happened with Miss Lebanon before, but mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I felt embarrassed because I, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, is she like, like, no, I want to show her like we're good. Like we don't have any problem, you know? So to tell you the truth, like Iraq, I didn't know Israel have a problem with Iraq. <laughs> because I knew we have problem with Lebanon, I know with, with Egypt and all the, like the these type of countries. But because in Israel there is so many Iraqi people, mm -hmm. I didn't know we have a problem with Iraq. I knew <laughs> it's an Arab country. Okay, no problem. But I didn't know this like this conflict. It's so yeah. big. How it was like. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Listen, because I grew up when I grew up in Iraq, like it, we, we had Saddam Hussein and he was against Israel and we had like death to Israel, death to, to the U.S. all over. And I really thought by the time he was gone, like we were done. I didn't know that we still had mm -hmm. an issue that we need to boycott Israel and we're against making pe peace with Israel. And then, you know, I left Iraq in 2009 and I've been living in the U.S. And I, I guess I was like in my American mentality, you know. Yeah. But I yeah, apparently t today Iraq is even worse. <laughs> really? Yes, because, you know, now wow. we're about the Iranian regime and Iran really hates Israel. So yeah. now the I know. propaganda. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But yeah. Wow. I remember the first thing yeah. you told me, like when I saw you, the shash is like, bring me a hug. Bring me yeah. a hug. Like, it, yeah. it was like this. Exactly. You're so lovely and so friendly that I was so like afraid for you and mm -hmm. you were so f friendly. So I like, okay. So it's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you were so sweet. I remember. So basically, you no, know, we took the picture. Like, I remember we were like really just talking. I was asking you a million questions. You were asking me a million questions. <laughs> And the Miss Universe staff, they were getting so angry. They're like, come on, yeah. come, come on, you need to go to shooting. Like, <laughs> we just like, yeah, we literally forgot about Miss Universe. But to me, that was like a, one of the unforgettable moments, you know, besides going, like, I will always say this, like the biggest moment for me was, you know, when I walked on the stage with the, uh, with the Iraq flag, I see it behind me. That was to me so big because I've never seen Iraq on Miss Universe, you know, like in yeah. my lifetime um but then basically people want to know what happened i go to sleep you went to sleep probably they kept us all day so this is something yeah. i tell people and they also don't get it like with miss universe it's literally remember we used to wake up at like 5 30 i think or six yeah. and we're out by seven and we're literally on our heels like since seven all day <laughs> all day we go all down day. like we're like troops it reminds me of the military life you know everything <laughs> like yeah we go yeah. we go people are waiting for us downstairs like the fans at 7 a.m yeah yeah with the flags and i everything. still i i don't get it but okay <laughs> thank you fans <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i don't get it i wouldn't wake up for anyone <laughs> <laughs> you know and we had to look really good because there are cameras yeah. and you had to be like on your heels and our feet was they were dead remember in like yeah, in all the rehearsals oh. like with the heels and dancing and go from this side to the other side yeah. and big rooms like yeah. yeah three weeks of torture <laughs> was it three weeks? yeah <laughs> it was good it was good <laughs> um so yeah so I go to sleep, I wake up, my phone blowing up, the Miss Iraq organization, um, my family, stranger numbers, um, all like, my phone like was insane. I'm like, what is going on? And then I see all the messages from the director of Miss Iraq. What did you do? You committed treason, delete the pictures, like, you know, yeah. going insane. And I picked up the phone and, and he was telling me like to delete it. My family told me they already had someone call them and threaten them, which to be honest with you, now I think it's probably Miss Iraq because like who knew my, like they knew my family phone number, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember you showed me like the document they sent yeah. you and yeah. I didn't understand anything, but you started to explain me everything that was there. Like I was so afraid. I was yeah. like shocked that, this even possible to happen like yeah. i remember both of us posting the picture 
my picture was like with a lot of positive comments from all yeah. around the world and you're like I got so all much hate, hate. yes yeah, <laughs> so much hate and I remember all the Israeli um other Israeli uh, communication channels and all all of that all the news was like apl- applause and, and so much love in our post and started to talk to me like good things about it mm-hmm. and your your side was the opposite And I was so afraid for you. I was so shocked that, wow, what, what Adar, we did. Yeah, Adar, you know, that, that tells you a lot. That tells yeah. you a lot. See, when you take a picture with me, your country, they were happy. They really yeah. want to make peace. Like, that's the thing. They want to make peace with other countries. This is why they were so happy. They're like, oh, my God, this is a milestone. She's yeah. with this Iraq. She's making friends. My people... Why are you taking a picture with her? Like yeah. trying to kill me over that. This is like really important for people to understand because, you know, this should tell you something about really like the conflict. Like Israel always been trying to make peace and it's the other countries who don't want to negotiate peace. And just yeah, like, it's right. don't hate, you know? And I remember, I uh, remember my uh, roommate, Miss Egypt. Yeah, But- I love her. Yeah, yeah. I so her. I meet her like that morning when I woke up and like in, in, we were still like in the room and I told her like I got messages and one of them came from um Harakat al Muqawam al Islamiyah and I'm like what is that and I'm like and they basically they were threatening me and they said don't even think about stepping a foot in the Middle East we will kill you and we will wow. also like use your body as an example like you know when they torture you like use your body as an example I'm like what the hell is that and yeah. I typed it me and her I'm like do you know what this is and she's like no we typed it on Google and it came as Hamas <laughs> wow wow and that was the first time I learned like about Hamas and who they are with it but this is why I hated Hamas ever since I'm like really, <laughs> really? Yeah. Hamas like You have I can more, give you like I can give you a lot of reasons about like, to hate beauty Hamas, pageants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, this is crazy. It's crazy that this is something like that people care about. Like why you why you care so much? Because two people make pictures, two people become friends from two different countries. Okay, we don't have a relationship, yeah. but why do you care? Like yeah. why people cannot make relationship because of their personality and not because their nationality yeah you're right no you're absolutely right and i remember you did something so sweet because remember i was freaking out about my family yeah. and i remember um you told me this you said sarah like you help me you're like sarah i remember don't that worry. <laughs> you you can bring your family and stay with my family in Israel. i remember you're that so sweet you are so sweet that oh so my well. god Yeah, yeah. like bring your family you can stay with my family you're safe and I'm like oh my god until now my family asked me why you didn't come to barbecue until now just to to let you know okay <laughs> <laughs> next time and you know I'll be yeah. back in Israel I have to go I know back to Israel. you know I, I know love- I know but no the last time when I went there it was crazy yeah um, you didn't have like any minutes I didn't have a single minute even my yeah. uh, my best friend like you know she was with me and I remember like we went to Jerusalem and I knew I knew it was gonna be crazy when I got there and I asked her to stay with me and I was like you know staying in a suite in King David and she saw she's like oh yeah I'm gonna stay with you I'm like really I'm like can you take care like of <laughs> answering to you <laughs> and all of that I, like after the next day she's like Sarah I'm sorry like I'm done like I love you but this is too much and like even she felt it you know it was insane yeah. like, I went there for we were filming the Miss Universe um mm-hmm. yeah it was uh, like um 20 was it 2021 or 2020 I, 2021 right 2021 yeah yeah 21 oh man and And that you know the, story, you know yeah. that this year like Miss Israel didn't participate in the Miss Universe I wanted for to the ask first you. time yeah why? why they nobody know like it's the first uh-huh. time after 72 years uh-huh. that they decided not to participate like in Israel there is so much um going on with um, democracy and 
feminism and all of that. And the magazine that it's on the Miss Israel decided this year not to compete, but they don't know if it's, it's going to be mm-hmm. new, like again in the, uh, in the next year or it's going to stay like this. Oh, I really yeah. hope it's going to come back, but... Yeah, I, I was going to ask know. you, I thought you will spill the tea about this and tell me what's going on. But Yeah, yeah. like, I talk with a lot of people from the organization. There is, like, a lot of of voices there. Like, they don't want to participate in this anymore in one hand. The other hand, they know it's, like, I saw this as a stage mm-hmm. for women to speak, for women to mm-hmm. receive this exposure. Yeah. And there is like two parts in the organization. One part they think the same as me, but the other part thinks like this is not not fit for 2023, you know, for women to be on stage with heels and short um, dresses. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So yeah. you think this is coming like from like conservative movement that they don't want no. this? Or... I'm not sure if it's conservative or it's like feminism that they think oh, like the it's feminist. not. Yeah, um, I think it's more for that. Yeah. Wow. You would I would have yeah. thought it was the religious, but it's the opposite. Yeah. It's the open minded. No, no. If you ask me next year, maybe it's going to be the religious uh, part of Israel <laughs> because it started to be strong here. But this year it was not. It was like more feminist. Mm. It was like more that. A woman doesn't need uh, the state to speak their mind, and that I don't think crazy. so. I think this stage was gives so much voice. Yeah. We both know that. Yeah, and I'm they, I'm so really shocked even, that this happened. They even changed so much about the pageant. Remember, because like before, yeah. you had to wear like the swimsuit, and now you can cover up your swimsuit. It's mm-hmm. not important. Like they yeah. changed a lot, you know. Even yeah, it was like also one year after the Miss Universe was here, and like the government and all the organizations saw how much mm-hmm. this exposure. Think like twenty uh, girls from all around the world in Israel, ex- telling about Israel to all the world, and I don't know how to, how after something like this they decided mm-hmm. that it's not good for Israel. I don't understand that really. You know, I wonder it's if crazy. it's because because you know they just had Miss Universe in Israel like the year we were there. Yeah, I think something happened back then. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Both that. People were complaining um, about each other. <laughs> I think so. I heard it. I heard it from Miss Universe complaining about the Israelis, and the Israelis were complaining about Miss Universe. Like it wasn't you really think so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there there is a chance. There is a chance something like this happened mm-hmm. um but nobody knows nobody wants to speak about it like mm-hmm. even what i'm saying nobody will speak about it like mm-hmm. they didn't even announce that there is no more is miss israel they just didn't send send anybody and when the miss uh-huh. is a uh, universe started they like okay miss israel this year is not going to compete and i'm like huh Wow. Why? Like, what happened? It's crazy. This is important time that you need to, yeah. you know? Wow. Yeah, this is what I, I speak with everybody that I know from the organization. Mm-hmm. Like, this time, it's the time that women need more space, more, like, more places to speak. Yeah. How this this happened, like. Man. In Israel, all the um, influencers and all the people that have a lot of followers and all mm-hmm. that in Israel... They speak a lot about that influencers don't raise their voice about politics in Israel. This mm-hmm. is like part of really big that a movement they are talking about now right now. Like and if that. you remember when there was like the last uh, operation in Israel, mm-hmm. I posted a video on my social that it mm-hmm. was like blow up mm-hmm. in every news. All all the people talked about that because like. People don't speak here about politics yeah. in social media. And to tell you the truth, a lot of times I don't have energy to talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. But when I like, I'm over it, I start mm-hmm. talking about everything. And we don't need to to come to this phase to start, start talking, you understand? Like we mm-hmm. need to, to talk all the time about exactly. politics, about what is going on 
about the situation with Israeli and Arabs and all of yeah. that. But like a lot of people don't want to to raise all the hate for them. Mm-hmm. Like even now, I, I, every post I put in my Instagram, they receive mm-hmm. like 20 messages of a Palestinian flag or I hate you, I will kill you. Mm-hmm. All the time, it's like that. Mm-hmm. And people don't want to receive more hate. No, but, oh, come on, come on. That is <laughs> that is so lame. Like, I would rather get the hate. Yeah, just close yeah. your comments if you don't want to see it. This is what I do. And to be honest with you, <laughs> because, like, literally, yeah, I've been closing my comments a lot. I only really? make them open for the podcast. Yeah, because, like, I get people from not just Iraq, like, from all over the Middle East. And, like, and they're such bullies. Like, if I listen to, like, listen, I'm a strong person, and they say, like, you shouldn't care about what people say, but sometimes it gets to you, you know? Like, if you deal with it all day, it gets to you, and they're very mean. They're very mean about everything. Like, a lot of times, you don't even know these people, right? And they will come, and, like, they will make fun of the way you look, or they will make fun of the way you dress, and, like, really, really, like, online bullies, you know? And yeah, so I, th- I think for this podcast, we'll need to shut the comments. <laughs> no, I'm opening it for this one. I'm, <laughs> and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyone, anyone that you, says really. anything like there. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It doesn't need to care like what people are going to say. You need to speak your mind. You need to say what is important to you. Yeah. And this is what you need to be matter for us, like. No, you know what? Oh my God, I forgot to tell you this. So I found out about this a few days ago. Listen to this. This is going to blow your mind. So uh, basically, I have one of the Miss, previous Miss Iraqs that I was following. Um, She posted a story. Well, I'm still following, not I was following. I, she posted a story with the... Uh, with the Miss Iraq organization. And if now, if you go to the Miss Iraq organization, their page, their website on Instagram, they have like created posts where they have included every, like they have the history of the Miss Iraqs and they have put pictures of everyone from like 1930 something, even to some Miss Baghdad's, like not even Miss Iraq, Miss Baghdad back in the day. And then then, then, 2016, boom, I'm gone. And then 2019, 20, and literally they have cut me from everything. I was like, what? So I go on their page and I scroll down to during the time, you know, when I was in Miss Mm -hmm. Universe, they were like promoting me and stuff. Yeah. They did everything. (gasps) Wow. Everything. Sarah, I can't believe. Can you imagine? Like no. the one Miss Iraq that presented your country. Yeah. Universe, like, you go and they literally, they made sure they erase me from the history. This is so crazy. You understand? Like you bring yeah. so much, you talk about Iraq and, and in that time we didn't talk anything mm. that it's bad about Iraq. You just show your country, you show the beautiful of your country, you show yourself. You show mm-hmm. how people in Iraq like are strong and mm-hmm. can speak their minds. Yeah. And this is their reaction. I can believe. Yeah, they no they literally like they, they made sure to erase me. And it honestly it you know what I thought about like when I was looking at that, I was like, this is like me when I grew up in Iraq and I didn't know that we had a Jewish Iraqi community until I left Iraq. But I heard like my dad spoke about a little bit, but I didn't know they were like hundred thousands and that we persecuted them in Farhud and, you know, and during the time when we had um, a Nazi prime minister, literally a Nazi prime minister who went to Germany to meet with Hitler and to, you know, to go and visit the concentration camps. And then he came back to Iraq and he persecuted all the Iraqi Jews. And Mm -hmm. the chapter they left from our history books and, I feel like I'm being treated that way. Like they're trying to erase me like from history, yeah. you know, like so that no Iraqi would know, you know, especially like if someone didn't hear about my story back then, like the new generation, they wouldn't mm-hmm. go me up. They wouldn't know anything about my activism. They're trying to erase me. Like this is the, 
this is their method for people right? not to learn from you like for people not to exactly. do the same as you did exactly this is crazy and it made me so angry you know why because um you have literally the miss miss earth and miss world and miss i don't know something else like all these misses right like the other pageant mm -hmm. they all deal with the miss iraq organization and they all they keep bringing their you know delegates to their organization and like i honestly i just want to say this like if there are any beauty pageant fans that are listening to this podcast you need to reach out to miss world and you need to reach out to miss earth and just tell them about what's happening because uh, and how the uh, how this director of miss iraq is treating mm -hmm. you is this yeah. a person you really want to work with? Is this an organization you really want to work with in the future? An organization that mute its women, you know, and they try to control mm -hmm. you and control your freedom of speech. It was, you know, like it was one thing when I was back in Miss Universe and they they made me write that stupid statement. Do you remember that I had to post? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that you don't support the Miss Israel. <laughs> yeah, you don't support Israeli policies yeah. in the Middle East. Yeah. Like, and now with the, like, they're literally, they're controlling their women and now they're deleting me from history. I haven't done one thing that disqualifies me from the organization. I left with my head high, you know? No, the situation that <laughs> you you've know? been through, like, they cut you off from your country because mm -hmm. of a picture, because of a friendship, because of you talk public, publicly. Like, this is crazy mm -hmm. just to think about something like that can happen in the Middle East, in the world, in any place. Like, mm -hmm. they cut you off from your yeah. country, they cut your family off, just because you speak your mind. Yeah. Just to think about it, because I came from, I don't, you know, from Israel, that people here can speak their mind, can do whatever they want, mm -hmm. and it's okay, you can speak your mind, this is democracy. Mm -hmm. um it's crazy for me to understand that something like that can happen yeah by the way i want to ask you after the pageant i was dealing with something and we haven't talked about this before but i wonder if you had the same issue as i did remember when we were in the pageant and our sponsor was this pa palestinian business guy faro kashami he owned remember the she hair product yeah. that we had he was the owner of that Okay. And um, basically, remember his photographer, the guy who was taking pictures of us, and he was also Palestinian. And after the pageant, this guy kept harassing me on Instagram, like calling me Zionist dog, like all of that. What? I was like, yes, I swear. And I had to block I, him. What I, I remember, huh? What I remember that when we were in the pageant, you always said to me, like, there is people in the organization, they are uh, Palestine or they are like, don't like mm -hmm. Israel and they don't take my pictures. And then I told oh, you yeah. also my, my pictures are not taking. Like, You're right. Yeah, they try. My... Yeah, this is what I, I remember. About that. Yeah. yeah, this is what I remember that even now, if I want to find any picture of me with the Shia and all that. No. Like, <laughs> like I wasn't there. I wasn't there. <laughs> You're so right. Oh my god, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot. This is what I remember. Because yeah. he, was, he was a photographer and he was Palestinian. And you know, the guy who owns it, Farouk Qashami, is Palestinian. And let me tell you in a second, like what I found out about this guy. Imagine this guy was this main sponsor, of, like one of the main sponsors for Miss Universe in our year. So this guy, he was very political. He's from Texas and he even ran for senator in Texas, Farouk Qashami, right? And in 2019, um, he was like very, you know, like outspoken and, you know, about Israel and all of that. In 2019, um, Donald Trump shut down his office in D.C. He had an office that was related to Hamas and like Islamic Jihad or something. Huh? Yes. And they shut they shut down one of his offices. Yeah. Wow. This is crazy. Wow. I know. People can go look it look it up. But yeah. listen, I remember I made posts about him on Twitter. So people probably can really? find it on Twitter. Um he was harassing me. He commented, he's like, you Zionist dog? 
like you, Zionist, this and that, and like very filthy mouth. And I literally, and I took screenshots and I posted it and I tagged Miss Universe at the time on Twitter. Really? Huh? Wow. I really? tagged, you them. tagged them. Wow. I tagged them. Yeah. At the time, I tagged them and I said, this was your photographer, one of your photographers, one of your main sponsors at Miss Universe calling me Zionist dog and harassing me. And I don't think they did anything. It's really messed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We can fix the world, but it's, it's messed up. We can. It's really messed up. We can. We can. You can. You can. But still, you have so much work to fix so much things. And, and we need to start. That's what gets that. me up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So during these rehearsals, um, basically... I remember um, Paula Sugart. Paula Sugart, she, okay. was, she was the president of Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. She came to me in the last day of the of the pageant of the rehearsals. And she's like, Sarah, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay, what's going on? She took me to the side. And then she said, if you want to, she said, listen, if you need to make an announcement, I am... Um, that you want to withdraw and don't participate in, in the televised pageant tomorrow. Let me know. Like we can do it. We can make the announcement right now. I swear. I swear. And she said, you know, like we, we uh, literally, I would bring her, you know, and have this conversation. She remembers. Right. And she's like, yeah, we'll tell them that you decided you don't want to continue and we'll just make a statement and you're fine. And then I looked at her. Right. Like, exactly. And I said, what? And she said, well, we are worried, you know, because uh, you got death threats, you know, for your political stance and for wearing a bikini, like people were upset. Um, we don't want to like put your life in jeopardy. So we think it's best if you withdraw. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I already got the death threats. I already got all of that. I want to continue. I want to finish, you know, I want to finish with this. But when she told me that, I knew I wasn't going to even make it to a top 50. <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah. top 50. Wow, top this 50. is crazy. Yeah, I knew. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, they want to get rid of me because they're afraid of liability. If anything yeah. happens to me, people come after them or, you know, when someone pulls you the day before the pageant and asks you whether you want to make a statement and just leave the pageant, you know, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so in that moment closer. you know i was thinking i was thinking i'm like you are supposed to empower women you yeah. are supposed to empower women and if you like when you tell me hey do you think maybe it's best that you make a statement and like we'll help you like to me that was it was the opposite and this is why like i was entirely like depressed after that like i just knew i didn't have a chance you know yeah but I still, I still think, first of all, I think you need a closure. I think you need to speak with someone, like, publicly. It's okay. About what happened there. Like, just to close this in your, like, your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, you're thinking if to do that or not. Mm -hmm. And then you decided that you're going to do that no matter what. And if you feel comfortable with this, you're going to make it. And I think this is your win, actually. Like, all the work you did after that, this is your win. Like, it's yeah. something that you never will accept that mm -hmm. if you weren't in this situation, if you didn't go through all the things we've gone through in the, in the Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. Of course, that if you win, it was, like, bigger. But I still think that the situation was, like how it should it's supposed to be you understand like yeah. this is your path for, to reach where you are now like mm -hmm. all the activism all the things you are doing exactly like, you know this is listen, your place I, no and listen i always say this i'm like if i i'm like thank god like nothing happened further than that with miss universe because i would have have been able to start my work and be an activist yeah like let's yeah. say Let's say I was tied with them for a contract for a year. I, I would be muted for a whole year because you can't speak for yourself anymore. Listen, I know this like for a fact, like when I was in the, even Miss Universe and, and before, like in the Miss Iraq, in the Miss Iraq USA, 
I was drag since the first pageant. I'm I'm not really a fan of pageant world. Like I'll be honest with you. Sorry for the people who are watching and are fans. <laughs> like I'm not really like it was never a thing for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was my sister's idea. I was a musician at the time, and I just wanted to do music. And my sister she asked me to go and participate, and I've always like I I don't know. I felt like why am I doing this? Like, you know, I wasn't really excited about it, but I was only excited for the Miss Universe Iraq because I was thinking, oh my God, this is about bringing my country and its history like on world stage. And I was like, so excited. I'm going to be, I will be the first person to do that in like 50 years, you know? So I was so excited for that. And once I finished, like, that's the thing. I feel like since day one, the pageant was not about me. It was for a bigger purpose. So I'm so glad for everything that's happened. Yeah. You know, like it was never about me. It was about showing Iraq, showing the history, um, telling the people what we deal with as women there, whether the death threats I got from wearing a bikini or whether the death threats I got from voicing my opinion in politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I brought so much attention to that. And then thank God after that, it launched into even a bigger cause of trying to bring Muslims and Jews together. And for that, I'm thankful. Uh, yeah. Yes. And we made it actually like we bring a voice. And it's not only that we bring a voice, we actually made a change. We actually made a path that people can relate and can yeah. communicate. Uh, because what we did, because all the all the news that was covered this, all the speaking in public about what we care about, because all the hostess that we did together, mm -hmm. this bring the voice to people that needed that. And people yeah. needed to communicate to communicate in in a way, and yeah. we we made it happen. Exactly. Yay, yeah. High five. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love this. I miss you so much, and hopefully, you know, we'll so. get to see you when you come to the U.S. and I'll let you come know. to the U.S. to the organizations that are watching. I don't know who's watching. Stand with us, read so. I don't know AJC if you're watching. <laughs> what a dark everybody in the United States. You better throw us a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adar. And, Thank you know, you. I can't wait. Let me know when you come here. And yeah. you owe me a visit. To LA. Yes, and you you need to come <clears throat> to barbecue. We are waiting for you. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Tell them I said hi. And hopefully yeah. we'll see each other soon. Hopefully. Thank right. you so much for hosting me. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye.